Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Kluvau. Today we will be making this Gnome Girl Christmas ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make our Gnome Girl, we'll start with the pattern. I used a piece of graph paper and cut a rectangle that was three across and four down, three by four, and I folded it in half. For the top, I only used an inch and a half, so three little quarter inch squares. And then for the bottom, I used my circle template, the two and three quarter inch circle, and I just lined up my hash marks and drew the circle here. And then I connected here, the circle to the three quarter inch top there. Then when I open it up, I have an inch and a half at the top, and then it goes out a little wider, and then comes around to the bottom. So I'm going to use this print from the Gnome Noel collection. This is Gnome Noel by Paintbrush Studio. I like this little image right here of the Santa, or maybe the, I'm gonna say, I, I don't know if that's a Santa or a gnome, but let's just call the gnome couple. Sometimes the gnome couple has the woman on the left or the right, and sometimes she's on the right. It doesn't matter to me. Um, here she is left, here she is right. It doesn't matter to me, I will use either one of those. Um, on the back, I'm going to try to uh, fit this mushroom. So I traced around the pattern and made a window template. Uh, this is just like a manila corn cardstock. And I'm going to line it up, you know, around this little motif and then another one around the big um, mushroom. I need to press this fabric and I'm going to trace and cut out these shapes. I wanted to show you the selvage, it says Gnome Noel by Liz Meitinger, I believe, Paintbrush Studios. And I'm going to align my window template with this little motif right here. I have one of these super cool silver pens. I like to use these. So this will be the front of my little gnome girl ornament. I have eight fat halves of this fabric. Here, I'll show you what they look like. I could also make the, um, the little girl from this fabric. That'd be really cute. There's a stripe. We're going to have fun with that. This one is great. It has birds and poinsettias. Here's the same print again. And then this one has little mushrooms and this one is snowflakes. But right now I'm just going to focus on this one fabric. Let's see. This um, pattern does include the seam allowance. I'm going to cut these two pieces out, the front and the back. There's my front and my back, and I'm just going to match them up, pin around the edge, and stitch with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. I have my machine threaded up with this dark green color of thread. I stitched, I trimmed the seam allowance, and I notched the curved bottom. And now I'll turn it right side out. There's the front. And there's the back. I'm going to press it flat and then I'll stuff it. I'm using a good quality polyester fiber fill to stuff it, and I like to stuff it firmly. Takes a few minutes, just a little bit at a time. But it's small enough that I can reach all the way in to the bottom. I also backstitched at the beginning and at the end of my seam because there's a lot of strain against these seams right here at the top because of all this 
movement and so I just want to make sure those are extra secure. That looks good. It's nice and firm and it's stuffed all the way to the top. It's important to stuff to the top because you want to be able to support the head. I'm going to gather this up by hand with a double strand of quilting thread. I'm not concerned about the thread matching my fabric because I'm going to be gluing the head right on top of this and the stitches won't show. I like to use a thimble. I'm just gathering this up through a single layer of the fabric with a running stitch. I secured my thread in the seam allowance on the inside by one of the seams and I'll finish just about in the same spot. And then as I tug to gather this up, I'm going to tuck the ends in and pull that nice and tight like that. That looks good. And then I'm just going to secure my thread by going through a couple more times. That looks good. Now I have prepared a one inch ball knob with the Rick Rack Ruby face. And of course, let's see here. Of course you can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. So I'm just going to apply some hot glue here to the bottom of the ball knob and press that right onto the top and I'm remembering that I want these two figures to be in the front of her dress. And the back is just this big mushroom. <laughs> There's no lace or a collar around the, um, between the head and the dress. So I try to keep that pretty neat. That looks good. I'm going to put her aside while we work on the hair and the hat. Trying to think about what is it that makes a gnome hat look like a gnome hat. There's a definite sort of a shape to it and I tried to capture that. But first we'll do the hair. This is just regular um, red heart acrylic yarn and we're going to make a braid for the gnome girl and what I'm going to do is just a little crochet with my hands just like a finger crochet but you can braid three pieces together if you like. I just find this is a little bit faster and easier for me. But if you want to do three strands and create a braid, that'll work too. I'm going to work this until it's about mm, maybe five inches long. At the very end of your chain, this is just a crocheted chain, um, just put the end through the last loop and pull it tight. I think this is long enough, but it looks really thin. So I actually made one from a heavier yarn, this yarn, which I don't know what it is or where I got it. <laughs> um, but then I think this one's too big. It's kind of like Goldilocks. This one is a little too thick, I think. And this one's a little too thin, but I'm going to go with the thinner one. I also think this yarn could almost be her hair without even any treatment. Just two long ponytails. They look like braids. So this would work just on its own without even making a crochet chain, but where's the fun in that? That's not fun. Just about exactly five inches. I'll cut off these ends about maybe a half an inch beyond those knots. And I will fold it in half to determine the center. And then I'm just going to glue this to the top of her head. And I want the braid to come around more toward the front to sort of frame the face. We are going to have a hat that will cover the top of it, but I want the braid to show on the sides of her face. All right, so I'll start with the center. I'm going to apply the glue to the braid. 
not too far back. That looks good. And then I'll put a little bit of uh, glue right here. Pull it a little bit forward. So it's not exactly in the center of the bead, but more forward. There's the glue on the other side. I'll just press that in. And there is her hairstyle. Cute. Now, next is her hat. The hat is from Red Felt. Here's the pattern for the hat. I cut a rectangle two and a, I mean two inches across and two and a half inches tall. I folded it in half and I just did a little curved shape here. Open it up and that is my hat pattern. I'm gonna cut two of those. Sometimes I just use one and then the seam is in the back, but this one I'm gonna cut out two and the seams will be on the sides. I've cut two hat pieces and I've pinned them together and I'm gonna stitch them on my machine along the two curved edges and leave this bottom straight open to go over her head. I backstitched at the beginning and the end and I'm gonna trim the seam allowance from this point. And then I'll turn it right side out. I wanna get the point out all the way so that I can see the stitches. That looks good. Now let's try it on. This looks good. Okay, what I want is for the back of the hat to completely cover the back of her head. So it's gonna be pulled down pretty far, but the front, I want to reveal her face. Before I glue the hat on, I'm gonna add some stuffing. I wanna be sure that the hat maintains its shape. So I'll get a lot of stuffing in there all the way to the point if I can but I still have to need, leave um, a certain amount of openness in the bottom to accommodate the head. That looks good. Now I'll apply some glue to the back of her head and glue the hat on. So there's a generous amount of glue on the back of her head and I'm pressing that hat into the glue. There we go. Now I still want to be able to see her features and I need to secure the hat a little bit more. So I'm going to cut just a little wedge out from the front of the hat just so I can see her face a little better. There's the shape that I cut away and now I can see her face a little bit better and I'm going to Pull it back to reveal a little surface to apply some glue and then I'll press the hat, the front of the hat, into the glue that is actually on her forehead, on the wood of her forehead right here. Not too much. Just like that and then press that in. That looks good. And then I want to secure it a little bit on the sides where the seams are too, but just a little bit of glue because we're going to add a little cord here and I don't want the cord to get hung up in the glue. Just a little bit of glue there and a little bit over here. Okay, here's how she looks so far. Her little braid and her pretty dress. Her hat is a good shape. A little bit more of her braid is showing on this side and her face is tipped a little bit. I like that. It's not perfectly in the center. I like that. Now we're gonna add some baker's twine and we're gonna add it around the rim of the hat, the brim of the hat. So right at one of the side seams, I'm gonna make a little stitch, pull it through, leave a nice long tail, and then in the opposite uh, seam on the other side, I'm gonna make another stitch. And then back to the first side, I'm gonna tie a bow. 
I'll start with a square knot just to make sure that is secure. And then a bow. That looks cute. Then I'm going to add a little smudge of glue to hold those loops under here, and then I'm going to press the bow into the glue. There we go. And then trim the streamers, however long you want them. If you make them too short, it's hard to tie a knot in the ends. Or sometimes you can just tie a knot first and then trim them. There we go. She looks so cute. Okay, now we need a hanging loop and I want to put the hanging loop in the top of the hat, but not way back here. It's a, she won't hang very straight. So I want it about right here. So I find about right here is a good spot. Let's try it. Let's see how she hangs. Fairly straight. So I will knot that at the top. There she is. Here's the gnome girl Christmas ornament. The first design in the Gnome Noel Christmas ornament collection. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.